The sponsor of this video is Slick Wraps. They offer high quality skins for all types of products. They also have a ton of options including wood and leather, but I've been using the black carbon fiber skin on the G4. It was easy to install, fits perfectly, and looks amazing. Use the link in the description to go check them out for yourself. The LG G4 is a flagship phone. It has top-notch specs, an unbelievable camera, and offers a very good overall user experience, but does it do enough to set itself apart from the rest of the competition? Here's my full review on the LG G4. This is actually also a giveaway. If you want to win this brand new LG G4, all you have to do is subscribe and drop a comment below. I will announce the winner in 10 days on my Twitter. The link to my Twitter and the details for the giveaway will be in the description below. At the time of recording this video, the G4 is still not super widely available, but when it is, it'll be around $600 to $650 unlocked, and that's a pretty standard flagship price. There's nothing out of the ordinary there. Taking a quick tour around the device, on the front you have a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440p display, a sort of textured look on the bezels, an ambient light sensor, and an 8 megapixel front facing camera. The left side has nothing, the top has an IR sensor and a microphone, the right side has a notch to remove the back cover, and the bottom has a micro USB port, another microphone, and the headphone jack. And lastly, on the back, you have a single rear-facing speaker, the power button sandwiched between the volume up and volume down buttons, a laser autofocus, the 16 megapixel camera, flash, and color spectrum sensor. LG has been putting the buttons on the back of their phones for a little while now, and I really like it. The volume rockers are textured and the power button is raised, so it's really easy to identify which button you are going to press. I really never hit the wrong one. And they're also in a very natural position on the back. My finger rests right about there anyway, so I think it's a really good alternative to having the buttons on the side, but I don't think it's that much better. It's just another good alternative. From the front, the G4 looks rather uninteresting. The texture bezels are a good idea in theory, but in reality, it's hardly noticeable. Around back, things do get a little more interesting. The default plastic has a weird diamond pattern that I don't love, so I still prefer to use the carbon fiber skin on mine. The G4 is a big phone. Not only does it have a 5.5 inch screen, but also fairly large bezels above and below, so one-handed use is no easy task. For some people, that's no problem whatsoever, and while I still value one-hand ability a lot, when you're buying this type of phone, you know that going into it, so I can't expect it to be one-handable. The build is a very interesting part of the G4. The default gray and white plastic versions feel, well, like plastic, and that's pretty disappointing, but there's also leather versions, and while I didn't get to use a leather version myself, which I really wish I did, um, they do look really nice, and it is genuine leather so that is definitely a better option than the plastic. Keep in mind the G4 still has a removable back so yes the backs are plastic and leather but you can still remove it and get access to the inside of the phone while other companies like Samsung and HTC use higher quality materials like glass and metal but they are sacrificing the removable back. The G4 is sporting a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440p IPS quantum display. Basically that results in a bright display with sharp contrast and a wider color range. It gets plenty bright to use in sunlight and the contrast is is more realistic than other phones like the Galaxy S6. It's supposed to be more natural for your eyes to look up, but really it comes down to personal preference whether you like that type of contrast. Personally, I prefer a more saturated contrast like you would find on the Galaxy S6 or other phones. Also, when you turn it on auto brightness, you still have some control over how bright it gets. And if you have it on auto and 50%, it always seemed a bit dim to me, so generally I keep it at auto and 100%. I really don't think it makes sense to give the user some manual control when it's on auto. I think it should either be fully auto or fully manual, and I don't know how many phones do this, so I'm not going to be too critical, but it did confuse me for a little bit before I figured it out. The camera on the LG G4 is unbelievable. Spec-wise, we're looking at a 16 megapixel sensor with an f1.8 aperture, laser autofocus, optical image stabilization, and a color spectrum sensor for optimal white balance. The camera app itself is also very good. There's even a manual mode that offers DSLR light controls, and best of all, for the photographers out there, it can even shoot in raw format. And even though I use a DSLR every single time I film one of these videos, when I'm taking pictures on my phone, I always keep it on auto. So right now you are looking at a collection of pictures taken on auto with the G4. You can see that it produces damn good pictures that are crazy sharp, both thanks to the sensor itself and LG's image processing that enhances the sharpness. Uh, the laser focus is almost instantaneous, and the f1.8 aperture gives the G4 really good performance in low light. Now it's not perfect, you can notice some noise, but it's really good. With the pictures out of the way, here's a sample video recorded at 4K and downscaled to 1080p to show you how the optical image stabilization works and how the mic sounds.
Sound is one of the few disappointments with the G4. While it does get pretty loud without distortion, the speaker is a single rear-facing unit, so when watching a video, the sound is literally projected away from you. I really wish LG would incorporate front-facing speakers because they have those big bezels above and below the screen anyway, and that would make the phone so much better, but instead we get the rear-facing speaker. In terms of operating system, LG has a light skin over Android 5.1, and when I say light, I mean like really light. The phone is still super snappy, and you can easily change the icons to their stock Android counterparts so it looks like it's stock Android. Uh, the skin overall is most obvious in the settings app because it's just the way it's laid out is different, but it's not bad at all. And I've only had a few hiccups with the software, otherwise it's been perfect. The biggest of which was the Google Photos app flat out not working, but I fixed that pretty easily by restarting the phone. Simple solution, yeah, and I'm not really complaining, but I just don't know why it happened in the first place. And yeah, every once in a while the phone will pause for a second to catch up, but even with heavy multitasking, the phone still flies. In terms of battery, the G4 is sporting a removable 3000 mAh battery. And when you do remove it, you get access to the SIM and micro SD card slot, and not only does it last me a full day easily, I also have the option to use a spare battery. And while it does support Quick Charge 2.0, it does not support wireless charging. And LG did say they'd come out with a back that supports wireless charging that you would buy and put on the back. It isn't there by default, so you gotta take one off for that. Conclusion time. The G4 is one of the best smartphone options out right now. And the biggest drawbacks are subpar build quality and a rear facing speaker. And because those two things are very important to myself, I would not sign a two year contract with this phone. That's gonna be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more content. And as always, Stay classy.